G'day guys, welcome back to episode two of our JK Lithium Upgrade Series. If you haven't already checked out episode one where I explain what's going into the system and why we're using the gear we are, go back and check it out now. I'll leave it up here in the top right hand corner for you. But in this episode guys, we're gonna be installing the iTech 200 lithium battery and the iTech World DC-DC 40 charger. So let's get straight into it. So you guys can see that the battery that's going in the iTech Wall 200 is going to be bigger. It's physically bigger than the AGM, so we expected that. So I'm going to have to uh, put in a new couple of mounting holes. But the good news is the bracket that was holding our original battery is going to just slide down perfectly and clamp onto the side of the iTech Wall battery. So that's just something to consider if you are putting one of these things in then you're probably going to have to modify your mountings a little bit. All I'm doing is just moving the holes where this goes through the floor, put a couple of more holes in and uh, bolt it back up again. It's going to get it as close as I can to the original two mounting holes for this for this clamp. I'll let you know what else is going on. So this cable right here is the cable that comes up through the floor from the Anderson plug at the front of the trailer. So I think this has just been added in. Uh, originally, it would have probably been off the seven pin plug, but someone's just added an Anderson plug cable in. Uh, that's gonna have to drop out. I'm just gonna pull that back through the floor and the cables. I'll give you some look at it. It's pretty, it's really light duty. So if I'm gonna be running 40 amps through this cable, I want it to be a bit thicker than that. So I'm gonna really run that in. Whole new cable for that. I've just taken out the solar controller there. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna put the DC to DC charger here and cover all that and then I'll slide the battery up as far as I can so that all of our cables will just be going through this wall uh, into the compartment right next to it with the c -Tech. Yeah, that's what we're up to. So, oh, me, like an idiot, came back from holiday and left all my tools at mum and dad's house. So, that's awesome, I'm trying to do this with whatever I got in the shed. So, this is fun. But anyway, guys, that's what we're up to. Um, let's keep plugging along. You can probably tell, but I'm just up under the van at the moment. I'm just ripping out all this uh, cable. This just one little uh, short run that goes from the drawbar on the Anderson plug back to the back of the van to charge the battery. The old system had no VSR, no DC-DC charger. It was just a straight run of cable straight back to the battery. So it's pretty thin. You can probably see that. It's pretty thin. Uh, so I can only imagine what the voltage drop would have been uh, when this was running, but I don't know it's yeah definitely way too thin to be doing what we want it to do for 40 amps so this whole thing is going to come out and we're going to replace it with uh six bns or six awg cable um that can handle 50 amps obviously we're not going to be pulling 50 we're only ever going to be pulling 40 so it should be pretty safe and obviously it's fused at the other end so let's get into it <laughs> of cable just off the um, off the end here going into the draw bar. So the reason I've done that is just to use this as a draw wire. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put, uh, just attach the new cable to the end of this one and use the other end at the end of the draw bar just to pull it all the way through just to make life a hell of a lot easier 
Ooh, so I'll straighten it up. Make life a hell of a lot easier just to be able to pull that cable straight through the draw bar to the other end and attach your Anderson plug up there. So after a whole bunch of mucking around, guys, this is pretty much what we've come up with. So, big iTech battery is going to sit in the back. Uh, just as soon as you drop that door, it's going to be right there. It wasn't my first pick, but it works out a little bit better. So, because it's going to be sitting right up the back on that that wall just there, you're going to get a lot more usable space in here. Um, you're going to lose a little bit over here where the DC DC charger is going to sit, but still, you've got a lot more usable space in that spot just there. And then you've still got all of this under under the seat as well. So. Battery's going to sit in here like this, um, just about to mount, mark these and mount it down. I've just measured underneath the van and everything lines up beautifully. So DC DC charger is pretty much going to sit on this wall over here. We're going to try to fit it up high and in that little corner there. You can probably see the end, some plugs there are just going to sort of sit on the battery. So we're going to have to do something with that and just tidy them up and get them out of the way. But other than that, that's just going to sit up there on that wall pretty well, perfectly, and we should be right to go. That's pretty much going to be our setup. Right, I couldn't really get the camera in uh, to show you guys how I've mounted the DC DC charger. It was just a little bit too tight and finicky in there, so I'll flip this around now. I'll show you how it's been mounted, and we'll have a bit of a look at how the setup's coming along. So you can see there, let's see if it's got the battery over here in that back corner and then DC DC charges is mounted um, it's really really easy you've got really good mounting points um, I've only test fitted at the moment I've only got one screw in the bottom and one on the top you might be able to see that yep but that's how it's fitted in there at the moment I'll put the other two screws in in just a minute but that's pretty much how it's going to sit uh, these Anderson plugs so obviously fix them down if you can um, for the time being I'm probably just going to leave them as is the main DC from the alternator so the grey one I will fix that in place because um, that's going to have another cable coming down and up through the floor from the uh, from the alternator so that's going to come up the wall and plug in here that's pretty much it and I've also just test fitted uh, the existing cables to the battery just to make sure the length's going to be good yeah so far so good I'll tell you what this has been really easy to fit it's obviously it's only two things that are going in there but just the way that iTech World have designed these uh, components they are really really easy real nice and square bits of gear to fit just just really simple to install so where I'm up to now I'm going to run this cable now from the draw bar back to the uh, battery compartment run that up through the floor and do the wiring for that Anderson plug. Uh, after that, I will wire in the output side to the battery. So then there's the DC DC charger from the alternator of the car all the way back to the battery finished. So if you're lucky enough to have a mate with you, um, you can just get them to feed it from the other side, from the other side as you pull on the other cable. Oh, there's a pole behind me there. But if you're like me, and if you're like me and have a wife, she can feed it for you. There we go. Yeah, it's enough. And there we go. One cable run done. Way easier than trying to push it through yourself by hand. Let's run this thing into the battery and get it charging. So once you've got your cable through your chassis rail, it's just a matter of following that same cable run that you took out earlier for the existing cable. We're following that all the way back to the back of the van to the battery. Well, let's get into it. All these holes here you can see after we took the AGM battery out these holes were all underneath it so this hole right here that was already there I've picked that one so I'm just gonna have to make it a little bit bigger just to suit the cable and try to seal it up as best as I can but I'd rather use one of these holes that are already there than 
have to put another hole somewhere and yeah potentially stuff that up there's a lot of steel work up just under this section right here i think there's a support beam just here i just missed it with that hole so there's a support beam in there there's uh the chassis rail is here and i think the outrigger mechanism is just in there so there's a lot of a lot of steel work under here so anyway let's make that a bit bigger and run this cable through You don't have to go too crazy with elongating holes either. Like that's that should be plenty just to get that cable through. It should be still nice and fairly tight. So you guys can probably see there's probably <laughs> there's a lot more cable in there than we even needed. Um, I've left way too much cable on this, but it's always better to have too much cable than not enough. So we'll cut this off, measure it to length, and this is going to just attach to the Anderson plug, which is going to our. DC input and grey Anderson plug here. And then our output is obviously uh, going back to the battery. done here you can see that I've just got inline crimps so these things are great if you have to join two pieces of cable together um, it's pretty much the only way that you can do it safely and the ones that I like have these nice long extended uh, insulation pieces over the ends of them they're really really handy they're really strong and um, if you're using the right cables you don't actually have to use any external heat shrink as these things will slip right over the ends of your cable but uh, if you are using some cable that's maybe a little bit wrong not quite the right size it's a good idea to use heat shrink as well <clears throat> this is just going to crimp straight onto the end of our incoming cable so from the back of the car going that we've just run underneath the van crimp that onto here and this is just going to plug in as our input to our DC DC charger Righto, so after a massive amount of mucking around, testing, turns out we got it right. So I'll take you inside, give us a little bit of a look at the install. I'll run you through exactly what happened with the wiring. I couldn't get the camera into a lot of the spots in there because it was just a little bit a little bit tricky and a little bit tight So while I was in there trying to work. So anyway, I'll show you how we've wired this thing up, show you the battery, show you the charger, and hopefully tomorrow morning, it should be pretty sunny so we can get out here and actually pump some solar into it. I'll flip this around, let's get in here and have a look. Alright guys, so here we are, you can see we've got the big battery here installed at the very back of the van. Not Wasn't my first place to put it, uh, first choice, but it's the only place that it would fit comfortably with the mounts like you guys saw. A little bit of, little bit of cleaning up to do in here. But you can see the DC DC charger up on this wall here. We had to move it, we originally had it over here, so we just had to move it across uh, to allow for um, these cables. So this is your main output from the DC charger over to the battery. I'll bring this up and above. So we had to do a little bit of mucking around. Uh, if I left the charger where it was originally, it wouldn't have reached these terminals, the negative terminal wouldn't have reached. So I've had to move that around. I've just screwed the Anderson plug up on this wall here. So the battery terminal Anderson plug is screwed to the wall and then down here our DC input so this is our cable coming from the floor underneath the van all the way to the drawbar with the Anderson plug at the front so that comes up into here and I've screwed that onto that wall there as well on the inside and then that's just plugged in to the DC charger and our solar like I mentioned before I wasn't sure what I was going to do whether I was going to have that run uh, down outside the van externally under the floor or something i'm just going to leave it here um because we do have a solar blanket that we use and that's kind of the only solar we use at the moment long term we're going to probably put a few fixed panels on the roof but for now this is all we're using just a little solar blanket so it's easy enough just to leave that hang there 
run our blanket through the compartment there, run the cable in and just plug it straight in to the DC-DC charger. That's pretty much it for the wiring. I'll just take his inside. Oh, I'll show you what we've done with the CTEC, how that works in with the whole system. All right, so the CTEC unit, this is the front view and this little isolator switch here is what nearly every caravan, I think in Australia has on it. It's just the changeover switch from uh, 240 volt mains power to battery power. So if I flick that on, you hear that click. That is just the CTEC um, using power from the battery. So inside here, if I can get it with one hand. So these are your fuses that come standard with the, the Jayco's. All those fuses in there we're still using. It's just a glorified fuse panel now. I've only got four circuits connected out of this fuse box. And that's pretty much how it's worked. Inside here, nothing's really changed. Um, that's your changeover switch. You see before, I've cut off the cable, 240 volt cable to the CTEC and all of our wiring back down to our fuse panel underneath is still the same and unchanged. But that's pretty much how the install came together. It's not really the neatest, it needs a little bit of a tidy up and I will be tidying this up in the next few days. Yeah, it worked really, really well. I'm really stoked with the way that it came up. Uh, really easy, really neat, really tidy. Um, once I get all these cables and that tidied up, it'll, it'll come up a tree.